how many five cent coins are needed to make 25 cents? 25 cents divided by five cents, and that would be five. So five coins is the answer, and that would be E. Which of the following shapes has a vertical line of symmetry? Okay, vertical going top to bottom. So if I drew a vertical line on which of these shapes would I get symmetry on both sides? And I believe that would be right here. And that means the answer is E for number two. Which of the following numbers is the largest? Okay, well, this is less than one, this is less than one, this is less than one, this is greater than one, that's greater than one. So we're down to B and D, and of those, 1.32 is greater than 1.03, and therefore the largest of the whole group would be B for number three. 50% of N is two, 2024, the value of N is. So 0 0.5 N is equal to 2024. So that's the math. And therefore multiply both sides by 2. And when we do that, we get N is equal to 4048. And that would be D. Ryan recorded the distance in kilometers that he ran on each day from Monday to Friday, as shown. The total distance that Ryan ran over the f five days is. So let's add this up. This looks like two. This looks like four, six, five, and three. So if I add those up, it looks like that is uh, 20. So 20 kilometers is the total for number five, and therefore that would be D. When the number 11 is increased by 2 and the result is then multiplied by 3 the final result is 11 increased by 2 and then that result multiplied by 3 okay so that'd be 3 times uh, 13 and then therefore that's 39 39 is the answer for number 6 that would be B the value of a that satisfies the equation 15 plus a is 10 15 plus a is equal to 10 so A would be 10 minus 15, and that is negative 5. Number 7, the answer is uh, B. In the diagram, angle ABC is a straight line, the value of X is. So if it's a straight line, that means all those angles, all the way around, would equal 180. So 40 plus X plus X is 180. So therefore, 2X is equal to 180 minus 40, which is 140. And therefore, x would be 140 divided by 2, which is 70. Number 8, therefore, is D. In a drawer, the ratio of the number of spoons to the number of forks is 1 to 2. The total number of spoons and forks in the drawer cannot be equal to. So spoons to forks, s to f, is 1 to 2. So if you cross multiply, you get f is equal to 2s, right? And they're saying the total, which would be f plus s, cannot be equal to. Okay, well, first let's make it all into one variable. So if f is 2s, that'd be 2s plus s, so that'd be 3s. So the total, which is f plus s, is 3s. So that basically means the total is a multiple of 3. Which one, the, which one of these is a multiple of 3 and which one is not? That's a multiple of 3, right? That's 3 times 4. That's uh, 3 times 2. That's 3 times 6. That is not a multiple of 3. Uh, we need an integer, 3 times an integer to equal 10. And that is 3 times 1. So therefore, this is the number that could not be equal to 3s since we require s to be an integer. In a, the diagram, a square with side length 6 is partially shaded. The largest shaded region is a square with side length 3. Uh, the other two shaded regions are squares with side lengths 2 and 1. What is the total area of the unshaded region? Okay, So the largest, uh, f first of all, the whole square is 6 by 6, right? So the total area would be 6 by 6, which is 36. And if we want the unshaded region, we would have to take 36 and subtract from it the area of the shaded region. Shaded region. Now that shaded region looks to me like three squares. W the first square is uh, 3 by 3. The second square is a 2 by 2, and the last square is the 1 by 1. So that looks to me like 36 minus 9 plus 4 plus 1. So that's 36 minus 14, I believe. And that would be 22. 
So therefore, that would be C for number 10.